everybody. Thank you so much for joining us here with our Breaking the Stigma Mental Health Initiative, Road to Recovery and On Track, where we work together to help break the stigma in this industry and talk about how you know people that we really look up to experience the same things that we all struggle with as well. Um, so I'm excited to have Dean here, Dean Wilson, here with us today Don't talking about on? his experience with anxiety. No. So I'm going to no, 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 no. go no. over a couple quick things. Uh, just to get started, make sure you are using your mute button when you are not talking, just to have the respect for everybody here. We want to listen to the great message that we're going to be receiving today. And we will have opportunities for questions, and you can use that um, little like hand raising button or the chat. So first I'm going to share my screen here with you. All right, so welcome. All right, so we have some people here joining us today. Uh, my name is Kylie Cisneros and I work for OnTrack School as a teacher. And I also have been a behavioral counselor for children and adolescents. So I'm very passionate about this and I'm excited to have you all with us today. Um, I'd love to also introduce Lori from Road to Recovery. And we have Andrea Lieb. She is here with On Track School. We also have Cassie. She is here. She's going to be helping out in the chat as well. And we also have Maureen, who will also be helping us today. All right, so what is mental health? This includes our emotional, physiological, and social well being. It affects how we feel, how we think, and we act. Um, over the course of your life, if you experience any mental health problems, your thinking, mood, and behavior can be affected by this. So, biological factors such as genes, brain chemistry contribute, life experiences such as trauma or abuse, family history of mental health problems. All right, so quickly, I just want to post these hotline numbers and text lines. So we have our national hotline number, Road to Recovery hotline. Um, all of these are great tools to utilize if you are in a position where you are needing some immediate help. So please take a screenshot or write these down if you are ever needing these services or if you know someone that is, you can utilize them. All right, this is a safe space. So we are seeking to create a stigma-free zone. All right, so let's keep this respectful. Make sure that this is a place where we are uplifting others. And again, just showing respect that we all deserve. The chat box is open. So please, if you have a couple minutes, enter in the chat box where you're from. Are you here for yourself or your child, your age? just to give us a little idea of who we are speaking to today so we can make sure that we are guiding this conversation in a way that will help you the most. We also have these breakout rooms. So if you would like to discuss a topic one-on-one -on -one with a mediator via video, in the chat box, please request a breakout room session to any or specific mediator. They will create a room and add you to it. You can also request to add more Zoom attendees into the breakout room. However, it is up to them if they accept the invite. All right, so here we have our guest speaker, Dean Wilson, talking about anxiety. And really quickly, I just want to talk about the definition of what anxiety is. So anxiety is an emotion characterized by feelings of tension, worried thoughts, and physical changes like increased blood pressure. People with anxiety disorders usually have reoccurring intrusive thoughts or concerns. They may avoid certain situations out of worry. They may also have physical symptoms such as sweating, trembling, dizziness, or rapid heart rate. Anxiety is not the same as fear, but they are often used interchangeably. Anxiety is considered a future-oriented, long-acting response broadly focused on a diffuse threat, Whereas fear is an appropriate, present-oriented and short-lived response to a clearly identifiable and specific threat. This is from the Encyclop Encyclopedia of, of Psychology and APA Dictionary of Psychology. 
All right, so I am going to, there we go, stop sharing my screen now. And I'd like to invite Dean to talk to us about a little bit of your experience with anxiety. And first of all, I'd like to thank you for joining us today again. So we're excited to have you here and learn from you. Um, you can start out with any introduction if you want, or we can jump right into kind of the meat of this discussion of, you know, when did you first experience anxiety? Is it something you've kind of had since you were a child or was there a certain moment where, you know, you felt like triggered this? Right, uh, well, what's up everybody? Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, anxiety is something that, uh, I, I don't know, a lot of people don't really like to discuss it, but I'm a very open and transparent person and I feel like um, if I can, help someone that's also struggling and you know that's good um so now when I was younger I actually dealt with a lot of anxiety but I just didn't even know what it was at the time it was just a lot of really nervous feeling sweaty palms um like you know like you said rapid heartbeat and I didn't know what it was I thought I was just nervous and but when it got really bad um was 2015 and 2016 was um I was writing for the factory uh, Red Bull KTM team and um, and I was just kind of not in a really good place and I got injured both years. I tore my ACL back to back and I was just, I just felt this very, um, I'd be driving, before I even got injured though, I'd be driving to the track and I just really had this sense of um, nervousness and felt really miserable inside and, and um, you know, same thing, rapid heartbeat, sweaty palms. And I just, I, I didn't really know what, I thought I was just having bad days. And so I just try to muscle my way through it and get through the days. And it was very, very measurable. Like it, it sucked the life out of me. And I think it was a little bit of the environment I was in. I, I just felt very tense all the time. So that's when I first really acknowledged what it was and it actually, I was like, oh, I've had that when I was younger. I just didn't know what it was, you know? So I had it then. And then, you know, the next few years, I um, still had it, but just not that as bad as that. Um, but the last couple of years, I've had it really bad. And then this last year, I've suffered a few panic attacks, which is something I've never experienced. And that was uh, actually really, really scary. Um, just like, yeah, out of nowhere. Um, I do know what things that trigger it, but um, it was just, it was really scary. I went to the hospital. I literally thought I was having a heart attack. <laughs> and yeah, it was crazy. So um, I've learned a lot and I kind of know what triggers it. And even, I'll, I'll even tell you right now, I have anxiety. My palms are really sway. And I believe it's from caffeine. I think I had a little too much caffeine today. <laughs> Uh, a little bit tired with the baby, so I've been, you know, too many coffees, um, and actually no better than that, but I kind of like, I gotta like coffee too much, but anyways, uh, so I've learned a lot what triggers it, um, and just trying to get through it, and uh, yeah, there's definitely lots to talk about, but um, I also suffer it really bad on race day, and that's something that actually really holds me back, um, but yeah, it's, it's really something tough. And I think a lot of people always laugh at anxiety that have never experienced it. And then once they really do, they're like, oh yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. And um, someone that I really look up to is a very, very world's best boxer, Tyson Fury. He's, he's awesome because he uh, really opens up to the mental health side of things. And it just gives you like that sense of comfort. Like this guy is the best in the world and he suffers with that you know, um, anxiety. He, he suffered with anxiety, depression and, and stuff like that. And he's a very big advocate and um, it's just, he's someone I look up to when it comes to things like this, but that's where I'm at. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'd like to also point out that, you know, you look up to him because he's sharing that and people here today and we're learning about this with you feel the exact same way. So thank you for opening up about this. No problem. No problem. Um, one thing that, you know, I really would love to make this aware for people. You mentioned how you, you actually went to the hospital because you thought you were having a heart attack. 
with your panic attack. And I can't tell you how common that is. I have, you know, previous patients and friends, myself included, actually, after I gave birth, um, I called my doctor thinking I was having blood pressure or heart attack Mm -hmm. issues. It was an anxiety attack. Just couldn't. (laughs) And this was me after. This was after education of all of this. So it's so really, it's really hard to know um, the difference because it feels, right. it's a very physical thing. This is not something yeah. that's just in your head. No, it's, it's really, really scary. Um, my heart just felt like it was pounding out its chest. And um, it was, I tried to write it out for as long as I could, like two or three hours, I think I did. And then um, I was just so scared to even move because I was like, oh, I'm going to elevate my, I just, I felt like the thing was going to explode. It was like, this is scary. It was the first time I ever felt like I was truly going to die. Yeah. And, you know, went to hospital, put the the EKG test and all that stuff. They gave me an IV bag. And then I I, I was like, I couldn't even breathe properly. I was like, I I was very short of breath. And um, yeah, they gave me an IV bag. I'm just trying to breathe. And then, sat there for like two hours and then you know they did blood tests all that and um they're like you know you're just having a panic attack like, this panic attack is this serious like this is what you feel like it it's terrible and then I had a I went home and then I had a few other little episodes not as serious but then I had one uh, last October when I flew to Australia and um that one was really really scary but I managed to I kind of knew what was happening, but um, what happened was I flew to Australia and I didn't sleep very well on the plane, so I was really tired. And then, um, so I had a drink, since that first panic attack, I really cut out caffeine. And Mm -hmm. then me just getting from Australia, I'm tired. And my friend picked me up and we went to a coffee shop and I didn't realize the coffee there was like double espresso shot, it was very strong. And so I drank it. And I thought just to help me, like I'm so tired. And then we went to this little recovery center, which you could do an ice bath and a sauna and stuff like that. So we went into the sauna for 20 minutes. And then right from the sauna, I jumped into the ice bath. And this was after I had my coffee. So I'm in the ice bath for five minutes. And then I get out and my friend gets out. He's grabbing a towel. And then I'm, I sit on the step and I'm like, I just feel my heart's just starting to escalate on its own. And I'm just like, my hands are starting to get real clammy. And I'm like, my friend Eris, I'm like, Eris, uh, I was like, I don't, I don't feel good. I was like, I, my heart's just pounding. And then like, he, funny enough, his experience all this, like, and he's like, hey, just relax. Like, I'm gonna grab you water. So he got me like four bottles of water and then I'm just trying to flush the coffee out of my system. And I'm just, so I'm pounding the water. And then like, I'm starting to tremble really bad. I'm shaking really bad, shaking like a leaf. I'm just trying to catch my breath and my heart was just pounding. I keep having my hand over my chest, like, this ain't good. Like I got to race the next day. So yeah. I'm trying to breathe. And then, so I sat for 15 minutes, pounded more, and then just breathe, breathe, breathe. I went for a little walk, 15 minute walk. He's trying to like, they're like, you got to move. You got to move. Like don't sit still. So we went for a little walk and um, I got in the truck Then I went to the hotel room and I just dimmed the lights and I just like, just for like an hour, just breathe. I was just trying to get my breath back. And just felt so much more relieved after a few hours I was relaxed and I still didn't feel great and then the next day I raced I had a great day racing but I still felt off I didn't feel great Mm -hmm. but that was the last episode I had and um yeah it was scary it was really scary because these panic attacks feel um yeah like you said they feel like a heart attack and I've never had one of those and I feel like I'm pretty healthy yeah guy so I don't know. It was it was scary. It's, don't wish it upon anyone. And if um, you know, it was the caffeine. It was a lack of sleep. Um, and then it was I went. You know, if even if you're completely fine and you go in a sauna for twenty minutes and you jump in an ice bath, your heart rate's going to elevate no matter what. But with that caffeine that I haven't drank, with two espresso shots, my heart rate was just pounding. So it was a really scary experience. But. Uh, I'm the tale. <laughs> I'm glad that you know you were able to be in a good environment with you know a yeah. friend at least was a little bit experienced mm-hmm. with this and could help you with it. Yeah. But 
really, you know, like you said, it, it wasn't as bad as your first one. And I think so much is that people aren't aware of what's happening if it's their first time having one. And the anxiety that you're already experiencing from whatever triggered it just mm -hmm. spirals because you don't know what's happening to your body. Exactly, exactly. And that so was, then it, uh, you know, gets more fear. Yeah, no, that was exactly like, that was like the first one I had. My, I'm already like a high anxiety person. So when I thought I was having a heart attack, I, was, I kept asking myself, am I having a heart attack? I'm on Google on my phone. Like I'm just, I'm freaking out. And that's just making it 10 times worse, right? So, yeah. and I, you know, I actually called, you know, my wife was here and I called like one of my best friends and said, hey, you need to come over and like, I don't know, I think I'm gonna die. And like, they're, they're like, just breathe, just breathe. And I'm like trying to breathe and yeah, it was rough. But um, yeah. it was, the thing that was nice, not what not, was not so nice, but, but the thing that was relieving was I talked to a few other racers about this and they're like oh i've had the exact same thing like two, the, your details are like exactly the same as mine and that made me feel so much better because i felt like i was the only one you know and um so yeah it's definitely i guess maybe it comes with age it gets worse but i i've been feeling really good this year um and when it comes to my anxiety um it goes sporadically like sometimes i won't have it for a long time but usually when I have my anxiety, it's from not living in the present. I'm thinking too far ahead and it starts to stress me out and my anxiety starts to raise. Um, that's one thing. Um, and then racing really raises my anxiety. Um, when I'm on the start line, I kind of, I've been injured a lot in my career, so I just don't want to get hurt. And then, but that, you know, you can't think like that racing, you know, at a professional level, you got to, you know, have a clear mind and whatever happens, happens type of action. But I've just been injured so much in my career. It, it just runs through my head. I, it's stuck in my brain and um, it really, you know, makes my anxiety work. So um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's tough. But at, at the same time, I think a, a lot of the racers get anxiety on the mm -hmm. start line. They just won't say it. Maybe just a little bit, but my level of anxiety is like pretty high because I can feel my heart pounding and I'm like, this is measurable, but um, once I get raped, then I'm fine, you know? Yeah. Well, no, that's to be oh, not really expected, but I would imagine that everyone is feeling a level of anxiety in the starts, especially, but yeah. especially, you know, if you had a rough year with injuries or anything, I, I can't imagine the level of anxiety, you know, that you must be experiencing. Right. Yeah. Like you said, yep. looking to the future is is really something that is it can trigger that anxiety because it's it's a fear-based you know issue this anxiety mm -hmm. so if you're living in the present you're not worrying about anything else and that really right. is what it all comes down to and so that's great that you've been able to pinpoint that and try to yeah. train your brain to a different type of thinking right yeah no I've, I've learned a lot and um yeah, you know, like I said, I've been a lot better this year, but um, last year was really bad. Um, so I, I yeah, I, I just obviously try to avoid things that will, will um, spark my anxiety or a, or a panic attack or whatever it may be. But um, yeah, it's just, it's, uh, you got to have your, surround yourself, you know, in good environments. It's very important. Yeah, absolutely. Did you seek help at all from any any type of counseling or did you find anything that worked or more like meditation or relaxation deep breathing is there anything specific that you could say has been helpful for you um honestly what really helps me is like hot yoga helped a lot like i always like thought back of what things really made me feel good and hot yoga like after hot yoga i always felt so good like internally i felt really good um, and then working out, just working out, um, in general, like, like I, if I don't work out, I get anxiety. Like I have to work out. It makes me feel like replenished and I just feel like I achieved something. And I think that's like, like important for me is like, I need to have a schedule and be held accountable. So if I have to do, uh, um, an hour bike ride tomorrow, I'll knock it out first thing in the morning. But if I just slept in tomorrow morning 
and then let just like let my hour bike ride till three o'clock in the afternoon that would really spark my anxiety all the way till I did it right like I need to just wake up and get things done and then I feel like I achieved something throughout the day you know like I sometimes when I have a rest day I start to like get a little antsy to like ah oh, you know like I haven't really done anything but um working out is huge huge for my anxiety probably the biggest I'd say that's excellent yeah I agree. Those are great things. And and you already mentioned trying to limit caffeine, which yeah. really, I, th- I think people don't think about that enough. Um, mm. Diet and caffeine is a huge part of anxiety. And um, it's hard because when you have anxiety, it really does deplete your energy. Um, especially like you said, when you had to race after your panic attack and you still felt a little bit off. Yeah. I, I always explain that it's like a hangover the next day. Your body has been depleted. And I personally, with ones that I've had, feel like I have a headache that lasts for 24 hours and just off. And so your natural thing is, oh, I should probably drink the coffee or something to help this. But that's the opposite of what, you know, people want to do. So I'm glad that you brought that up. Yep. Yeah, no, for sure. It's uh, like I said, after the first, um panic attack I didn't have any caffeine for a long time then here and there I'd have a like just very randomly I'd have a normal uh coffee and then I could just instantly feel it like it was like my heart would just start pounding I'm like I was I was, I was starting to think I had a heart issue like I really did and then um like I said I just like I would always I love I just love coffee so I just drink um decaf and um yeah, caffeine is definitely definitely like a, a huge thing or any sort of stimulant. Like it didn't matter what it would be, that would just boom. Like it was just a, it's like a button. So it was um I, I definitely avoided all that last year for the most part until I got to Australia and I was thinking, oh coffee won't kill me. I'm so tired, jet lag. And uh yeah, it did the opposite. So yeah. Well, we have some comments that I, I want to make sure that you see. Um, it says, sounds like Dean is learning and applying new ways of working through the moment with a thumbs up. So I yep, agree. No, I, definitely learning a lot. I, I, I um, yeah, it's crazy. I just, it's not like, you know, these things just happen, you know, it's not like, um, I don't know. It's, I eat just something weird. It's, it's not like you want it to happen, but when it happens, you need to learn how to deal with it at the end of the day, you know, and that's it. So. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, does anybody have anything that they'd like to ask? I can open this up if there's any questions. Yeah, don't be shy. Ask any question. Also, I, what do you think? Oh, yeah. Um. Dean, I know you made a comment um, along the lines of like, everyone experiences it, just nobody talks about it. Um, I would never ask you to share names. I need to emphasize that. But within the camaraderie of the sport, these people that you're interacting with, whether that's teammates or people that you're training with that are not teammates, Mm -hmm. find that there's this sense of like you guys discussing these feelings with each other and have this level of trust, or do you find it's completely taboo and that's not something that you share with anyone? And this is something that um, is more so private, even with the people that you're close with. I hope that's asked in an okay way. Yeah, no, uh, I just really don't understand the whole like, people trying to hide like their I don't know like like talking about anxiety like I don't get it like I, it's, it's it's just life you know and and so I asked um, one of my teammates my, my old teammates I, I talked to him about it and he was kind of going through the same thing I was and then uh one of my other friends that raises um at high level and yeah they they, they it made me just feel so much better you know when because my friend actually said he was in uh, a hyperbaric chamber and he started having a panic attack. He said it was the worst like six minutes of his life because he couldn't get, he was stuck in this chamber and he was already at altitude. And, and then when you're in one of those, you can't just open up and get out. You have to decompress. And he says he was freaking out in there and he, he wanted to get out, but he couldn't get out for like six minutes. He was trapped in there because it was the worst experience. So it definitely just gives you a sense of relief. Like, you know, not everybody deals with the business, but some people do. 
and you're not the only one. And I think that's um, something that really made me feel better. And um, yeah, I mean, some people share it, some people don't, um, but I don't know. I just uh, figured, you know, like I said, uh, Tyson Fury, someone I look up to, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably don't know who he is, but you should definitely go on YouTube later on and type in Tyson Fury, um, anxiety and mental health, and it's pretty inspiring. And I, I, he made me feel comfortable, you know? So if I can do that to anyone else, you know, I'm, if you're just here to help at the end of the day, you know? Mm -hmm. I have a question, Dean. Um, now that, you know, you said that you recognize it before your races, and I know you guys have trainers and mechanics and all of those people working with you. Is that something you communicate with them and that you can work on? Like, you know, you talked about your routine, like your schedule and routines are regulating to our brain, which helps, you know, decrease some of those other things that yeah. are happening. But is it something that you have talked with your team about kind of building in a race day routine to kind of help you curb some of that? Yeah, no, for sure. My mechanic knows um my, my team kind of knows but like um uh, mainly my mechanics we have a routine and, and having a routine is like so important because then you just feel relaxed you're not on edge you know you and your mechanic are on the same page and you guys work like clockwork so there's no stressing about anything you know like i raced this past weekend in detroit and i had my routine and like it was like i got to the track and i was in the best mood and i haven't felt that good in a long time because i woke up um had a for one, I had a really good sleep, which hasn't happened in a while because I've had a, we have a newborn. But uh, so I had a good sleep and then I went down to the gym, did 30 minutes cardio. So boom, already done cardio for the day. Like I feel good. And then I went, had a shower um, and then went to the track. I uh, had my coffee <laughs> and then I had my breakfast. And I was just like, I just felt like everything was just like on point. You know, everything was just like in line. And I just was in such a good mood. I felt good internally um and that and i felt good all day like it so it was really um it's important to have a, a routine a schedule and that's definitely something that helps me yeah i think i think it's so great that first of all dean you went on your social media and you talked about it because i you know i've been around 18 something years since michael was racing and a lot of people don't talk about anything and then this this whole initiative started a couple of years ago because you know there was a tragedy that came about and somebody actually took his life and we all kind of sat back with roy and tim cotter and Lori and said we've got to open up a dialogue and it's just great to hear you talking openly and i'm not i know this can't be easy too you know, uh, especially if you had a coffee today, because <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I know, I know, <laughs> I, 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 won't lie. I, I went a little bit extreme on my caffeine intake today, so it's just starting to wear off a bit now, but I'm, I'm okay, okay right. talking about it. I'm just like very open, probably say more than I should most of the time, but I, I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm totally comfortable, honestly. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's, it's good. And, and you're, you know, you might not realize it because you are so open that, but there's so many people that don't want to talk about anything. And this, right. and just like when you, just like when you open that up and you had a conversation and you realized you weren't the only one and how good that makes you feel, yeah. um, makes other people feel that way too. And I, I love the fact that you found yoga and that you realize that working out works for you and you're tuning into oh. the things that help can help you. And I yeah. also just think from a counseling perspective that thoughts thoughts are things like right. I study the brain and I'm studying NLP, which is fascinating to me. It's neuro-linguistic patterning and the thoughts that you tell yourself, even if you just journal and you write a thought down for the week uh -huh. and you focus on that one thing, like I'm getting better every day, just that yeah. I'm getting yep. better. Then by the time race day comes, guess what? Your brain is a very obedient organ and it listens. Yeah. We just no, need, I, to, uh, need to give it the right food. <laughs> right, right. I actually, um, the thoughts are things, um, um, quote, like that reminds me of, I, I, I didn't read the book by audio lesson, because I'm not going to read the book, by audio lesson, uh, the book called The Secret. And yes. um, that, that was a really big help to me, honestly. It made me, uh, that helped me really live in the present. 
and just being having that gratitude and being grateful and like it just put me in a really good mindset a really good place and I just felt like I don't know it, it really helped me a lot and I just put, put it on my ear pods and in my truck and just listen to the lady read it to me and uh yeah I think um yeah that, that helped me a lot actually yeah and I got I've... that I got that book off of um Conor McGregor because he spoke about it and I was like a big Conor McGregor fan and he spoke about how his sister got him the book The Secret and it's about visualization and it's about a whole lot of things but it's it's really good you know um and it helped me yeah it's about affirmation right and it's right. you know the things that you affirm they it's like setting a goal they can actually happen so that's awesome thanks for sharing that Dean yep Yep, no problem. Yeah. Oh. Good, good evening, Dean. How are you? Uh, Dr. Ryman's in the house. How <laughs> yes. are you doing? I'm doing fine. Uh, saw you in that cold Detroit scene. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, you know, you're talking about get doing routines, get getting up to the start line, and whether it's moto and my my racing was on two legs, not two wheels, but. Uh, yeah. We all had our routines going up to the start, uh, ranging from the guys that are, are using their fists to beat on the chest. And for some god awful reason, I don't know, I yawned. Uh, right. Uh, right. I just went up there and yawned. But to put yourself in that routine can be very helpful. Exercise yeah. is a wonderful thing for both physical yeah. and mental health. And, right. uh, you know, even when you get to be as much of an old guy as me, keep doing it. Uh, yeah, really, no, for and, sure. And, and it really helps out. But the nice thing, it, Dean, I, I thought I knew you well. I know you even better now in the last five minutes. Um, yeah, I thank you. And, uh, but the good thing is you're trying to learn about it and you're trying to uh, make yourself better and everything. And that, that little one at home will make you a lot better. Yeah, no, for sure. Thanks for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm always learning. I'm still learning. Um, you know, I still get anxiety to this day, but definitely learning how to cope with it and deal with it and little routines, like you said. And um, yeah, it's it, I'm, like I said, I don't have it mastered, that's for sure. Well, nobody ever does have it mastered, so I don't think anyone needs to worry about that. Um, yeah, I do yeah. want to say, so what do you think will help other pro writers talk about this more or feel more comfortable about this because we are so grateful that you're opening up about this especially to the younger writers I have a son who races he has a lot of anxiety um he has Tourette's disorder so he has like tics that happen when he's on the line because that's a very mm -hmm. stressful moment and I know for him and his little buddies they experience a lot of a lot of stress for a young child. And, and I love that you're talking about this and I just can't even imagine how we could elevate the sport and how people are growing in this. If they have their, you know, their idols who are talking about the same way that they feel, do you have right. any advice or do you think that it might be something that people will start to talk about more? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just don't think everyone's, everyone's very, um, I'm sorry, not everyone, but most people are, are quite keep stuff to themselves you know so mm -hmm. I I I think it'd be great if a lot of the top guys discuss it, if any of them dealt yeah. with any issues and, and discussed it to help the younger youth I think that would be great um but yeah a lot of guys are just very um like to keep stuff to themselves or just aren't open like that or you know um but you know the more awareness and you can spread the better for sure you know and it's you know, it's funny you mentioned your son. Like, I, I was had a lot of anxiety as a kid, but I didn't even know I had it. I didn't know what it was. I just there's a feeling inside that, you know, I don't know. That's just what I had. So, um, yeah, I, I really, you know, that's why I'll bring it up again. But Tyson Fury brought um, was the one that made me almost feel comfortable talking about it. So maybe some guys see this and they're like you know that would be cool for me to kind of um talk about whatever i'm struggling with uh maybe it can help you know so um but that's i think it was definitely someone that made me feel comfortable to talk about it and 
because I really can relate to the things he said. He also talked about having a panic attack and saying how he felt like he was going to die and this and that. And um, it was pretty cool. Um, he's got pretty cool stuff on YouTube. That's great. I think I saw um, Lori posted a link in the chat box actually about, is that from him, Lori? I haven't checked yes, it out. I got it from Andrea. So thank awesome. you. Andrea. <laughs> yeah. So okay. check the chat box and you can read a little bit more. So go. we have a question in the chat box as well. It says, would you ever advocate for teams to have mental health coaches? Um, yeah, actually, I think there's, I think there's some helpful guys that actually are in the pits right now that are like, maybe not so much mental health, but like sports psychologists or something like that. But um, I think, I don't know if it would work just because, like I said, some guys don't like to talk about it or like, I've been around for a long time and I've had a lot of teammates and like a lot of, those, I don't see if, if each team had a mental health coach, I really don't see them using him to like, like I really don't see them using him a lot, to be honest. Maybe during the week it would be great, but at the races, I don't really see, I know racers are just very to themselves a lot of the time. So um, I'm not sure if it would work, but um, it would definitely have to be something where the team manager would have to talk to all the writers and say, hey, are you guys interested? Is this worth it? Uh, would you use him? Type of thing, you know? And if everyone was on board, then I think it would work out, you know? That's great. I do think it would be great to have someone, you know, like you said, not everyone's very comfortable with opening up. So that would be a great tool to have to those writers who maybe don't want to talk about it to their their friends or their teammates or anyone else, but having that trusted person might be a good outlet for them to be able to explain their fears or their, you know, their problems with. So. I've actually got something quite that just popped in my mind was I told you guys that like when I really started to feel my anxiety, it was 2015. And I, I was really struggling that year mentally. And I went to uh, a sports psychologist in Anaheim. So I went to this guy and um, went to him a few times. He's, like, he's uh, helped baseball guys and stuff like that. So he ended up doing this test on me where he literally hooked up my head with like, I don't even know how many things on my head. And he could see all the brain waves maybe would it be. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. And he, he, I want to say he asked me 350 questions. And I thought I, 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 I thought that I had um, ADD or something or ADHD because I, when I was racing, I'd always kind of make like a brain fart move and like it just silly moves and like I, I was like, she's like, do I have ADD or he's like, let's do this test. So I, I remember I uh, did this test. They had all these things hooked up to my head and asked me like 250 questions and um, I, I ended up actually I think I was diagnosed. I don't know if you should be diagnosed, but he says. Uh, your problem is anxiety. Uh, that was the result with anxiety. I don't remember exactly what he said, but it's actually interesting. And I wish I didn't really pay attention to it or like I didn't acknowledge it that well because I, I didn't. He's like, if we treat your anxiety, then your um, that what you're struggling with will go away. But I kind of, uh, I didn't really listen to him, if I'm honest. And if I could go back to him now, I would be like, oh, you're right. So, um, because I just didn't see him after that, I don't think, um, because I didn't really understand anxiety at that time. So, well, that's great. Do you have any advice that you would like to give to maybe new writers, younger, or maybe even up and coming guys who are about to start racing professionally? Any advice if they're experiencing anxiety? Um, yeah, I mean, just I think. Obviously, just uh, for one, like do the right things, put yourself in the right situations. Um, I feel like sometimes if you're, uh, you can really stress yourself out with anxiety. And like, I think if you're a racer and you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, that can also create anxiety. So if you're out, uh, you know, messing about and not putting in your best effort, then that can create, that's one way to create anxiety, right? So just, I would just say, Put your best foot forward and do your and do everything you can to be the best you can at the end of the day. And, that, and at the end of the day, if you do that and your results aren't what 
you want them to be, like you're doing your best, right? That, like that's one thing that I can look back on my career. I trained really hard my whole career and I've done my best. And if it was a 10, then that's it. I, that's all I had. So um, definitely routine helps a lot. Um, and yeah, just, just uh, stay out of trouble. <laughs> That's great advice. I think we had a hand go up a minute ago. Um, I think it was, that was Ian Collins. Ian? Yes, Ian. Did you want to come off mute and ask yeah. a question? Yeah, sorry. I was really confused about it. Um, hey, Dean, I had a question about um, just the whole anxiety about it at motocross. So I get it a lot, uh, especially like before on the line and all that. Do you think a therapist could help or... Yeah, I, I think I definitely don't think it would hurt. I think, um, like, so I, I, when I went to my sports psychologist guy, like, I told him the feelings I had on the start line, like, my hands would get cloudy, my heart would be pounding. I'm, I'm worried about, for one, I had a lot of pressure on me from other factors seemed to do well. So I, I had, you know, performance anxiety. I really wanted to perform, but like, I put so much pressure on myself. And I'm telling him, like, all the things that went through my head on the start line. And then, so he, it, it, it would definitely help to go see someone just because he can help you create a routine, right? So this guy that I've seen, he was like, when you sit in the stadium, like, if you see something, like, make it uh, the corner of the big screen. Um, focus on that, like, just that corner of the big screen. And then just, like, do your breathing technique. And he, he can make you a routine or whatever his the, the formula may be. Um, and that will will really help. Um, but yeah, I definitely don't think it would hurt. Okay, thank you. No problem. I do want to share a couple things really quickly with everybody. Let's see. Okay, so here we have our different types of common anxiety disorders. So we have fear, which, and I think that's a lot of what most of us experience um, having that routine and focusing on the things that we can control definitely helps out with that fear-based anxiety disorder. Um, we have social phobia, OCD, PTSD, something that you know happened to you that has triggered this anxiety, panic disorders. Um, so these are just things to keep in mind that I just wanted to make sure everyone's aware of. And this is called the four-step approach here. So this is a four-step approach to overcome anxiety. So one way to motivate yourself in the face of anxiety is to build a values-based mindset. So we've been talking about that mindset and how it's so powerful. So identify the meaningful parts of life that the anxiety is blocking, because anxiety is a blocker. It's getting in the way of what your progress is supposed to be doing. So shift that focus away from the anxiety itself towards your meaningful goal. Then create a list of positive messages that would motivate you toward that goal. And four, be gentle with yourself. You're not alone. That's why we're here today. We're learning from others. A lot of us in this one meeting have experienced these same feelings. So you're definitely not alone. Many of the people you meet might be working through. Maybe if you are racing against your biggest competitor, they are probably experiencing these same issues. So that helps you feel like you're working, working towards something that is a similar feeling with others. Um, so I just liked that and I wanted to share that a little bit. But here are some panic attack symptoms that we talked about a little bit before, but we have hyperventilation, that feeling like you can't take a deep breath, like you're missing air. You're racing heartbeat, ringing ears, sweating, feeling dizzy or nauseated feeling weak, trembling or shaking, and then a chest tightness and pain. So these are some symptoms that uh, just to keep in mind, I just wanted to make sure that everyone has those because like we mentioned earlier, that first one, if that happens, I think at some point in life, a lot of us might have that moment. And if you aren't aware of what's happening to your body, it's going to feel even worse. So having that tool to be able to identify and calm yourself down is going to help a lot. And we have a hand up, Roy. Yes, uh, uh, Dean, for, this is Roy Jansen with uh, MX Sports. Uh, first off, thank you for being here. Um, no problem. You, 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 
my, I guess my question is, is, is both a question and a comment. And you, uh, you came upon the scene with so much talent at such a young age. And uh, with that came fame, pressure, uh, stress, income, uh, expectations of other people. Um, what's your advice for, to these other, there's some parents on here that I recognize, what's your advice to these, these other young folks who are, 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 are going, are experiencing that same thing? I mean, you're, you're one of the 20 best motorbike racers in the world. Uh, whatever that's worth, uh, that, that's 8 billion people. Uh, being top 20 out of 8 billion, pretty high. Um, you, you took on an awful lot at a young age. Uh, tell us about, where, where, where you, where's, did you feel you had all the support you needed to make that transition from being a child to all of a sudden being a child star and being a young, uh, high paid champion athlete. Yeah, I mean, um, my story is kind of crazy because I was born in Scotland. I moved away at nine, to 10 years old, moved to Canada with my family, lived there for five or six years, moved to America, California with my mom and dad. And um, it's pretty crazy because I got a team green ride and I, um, at 14 years old, and my mom and dad fully committed to coming to America to pretty much chase that dream for me, which is very crazy that they would do that and put their, you know, their, their, I don't know, lights on the line or whatever you want to say, you know, because we didn't know it was going to work out. It, it might have not worked out, right? So, uh, yeah, I, I went through the ranks and I always felt a little bit pressure, like, like I, I, if this don't work out, then I guess I'll be swinging hammers with my dad, right? So um, we took a big gamble um, moving to America. And yeah, it ended up working out. Things went very well. But I always think the first year of being a professional is the funnest year. It's your first year, you're experiencing all the new stuff, you're going to new cities. That was the first time I really was on an airplane was my going to my first race. I never rode in an airplane much. Um, I had a couple of times before, but, um, you know, so the first year being a rookie is always fun and exciting. You have no pressure from the team, no expectation. You're just going out there and doing your best and you're just a young kid. So my rookie year was like that. I had so much fun. I done really good. I won races, got on the podium, got rookie of the year. And then the next year, um, there was a tiny bit more pressure because they seen what I was capable of. And I obviously won races, so like, okay, well, it's time for you to win the championship. So I definitely felt that pressure a little bit. But um, so I ended up getting uh, second in Supercross, and I won the outdoor title, my second year pro. So that was a really, really good year. The third year was when I really felt the pressure. I was expected to win with all costs. Like I, that was my job, and that's when the pressure and anxiety and everything really kicked in for me. And and uh, yeah, there were some races where I just buckled under pressure. I just couldn't handle, like, I felt like the whole weight, like, I just, I also put pressure on myself. And then, obviously, the big manufacturers have high expectations of you as well. So, that's a lot to take. So, I, I always just think, you know, if I could go back to, if I can rewind back, um, I just wish that I tried to enjoy myself more in racing. I always just put so much pressure on myself to win. And that would sometimes work in reverse and make things go worse. Um, I would struggle with arm pump. I, I would get a bad star. I was just, I was just so flustered. Um, but the first two years were so good because I didn't really have a care in the world. I was just so carefree and I was working hard and I was winning races and I won a championship and it was good. And then when I was expecting to do that in the next year, that was, uh, some people have, can, can do it. And then some people, I'm a bit of a harder time. So I think um, if I could have just, um, yeah, enjoyed it a little bit more and not put so much pressure on myself, uh, it could have went different. But you're always learning in this sport. You know, you got to go through the trials and errors to uh, 
become the person you are. Should we be coaching not just our young stars, but our our the the the, the young participants in our sport? Uh, it's a dangerous sport to begin with. Uh, brings with it the bumps and bruises. Your comment earlier about I I, I can't fit in, getting hurt. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, your your responsibilities have changed. Uh, when you are wrapping up your career, uh, have you considered going back and becoming this mentor of young athletes? Yeah, no, I definitely have. I think uh, I've been through so much in my career. I, I have learned so much, and I, I feel like I can definitely be a big help to some of the younger kids. Um, but, uh, yeah, I know what it takes to be at the top. And it's a lot of hard work and constant hard work and sacrifice. Pretty much since 2013, I got. Year 2017, got hurt 2018. Year 2019, got. So, With the nail to get through my my career, it's never been easy ever. It's it just it literally gets harder, and I have a I feel like I would definitely have a lot to offer the young kids, and and um, it's 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 hard work. It's a lot of hard work, and you just have to be dedicated, and and if you want it bad enough, you can make it happen. But I definitely wouldn't be helping um someone that wouldn't be willing to uh that just isn't committed to it because it takes a hundred percent commitment, you know. And it's important, you know, the, 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 the headline of this is break the stigma. Um, yeah. Because folks, because I, I, I can assure you, you're not alone <laughs> and, yeah. and among our, our professional athletes. Uh, folks who experience the same things that you experience and, yeah. uh, and, and, and you, uh, it, you can hear in your explanations and the outreach that you did, uh, you know, uh, looking into the experiences of other famous people, Tyson Fury or some of these yeah. other things, of uh, being able to understand it better. Um, because one, that, that the understanding and it, recognizing it, you, you, you do understand the triggers, you do understand how structure mm -hmm. help, helps get the, Keep it away. Uh, yeah. That when 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 you, you lose that structure, you lose that organizational kind of control. Uh, but just the ability to recognize it, talk openly about it. Uh, that's such a gigantic step towards. Uh, I'm 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 dealing with this. I I got yeah. it. Yeah. And, yeah. Exactly. No, I um I think being open about it and talking about it definitely helps your anxiety as well. And then that's if I didn't I, I actually um that Australia story I told about when I had my panic attack, I told it on Instagram and it was so cool the amount of feedback I got from that. Um there were so many people that um messaged me privately and were like, Oh man, I you, what you said is like I have felt I have dealt exactly the same thing. And that just gave me so much relief. And this guy actually, one of my friends was like, hey, you should watch this. Uh, I think it was on Netflix. And it was a very, very good tennis player. I can't remember his name. You have to Google tennis player anxiety Netflix or something. But he deal dealt with an, uh, anxiety so bad that he was like, it it's a really good watch. And I watched it and it was like, man, I can relate to him so much. And he was so afraid to get out on the court because he, 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 his heart rate was just raining through the roof. And um, it was a really good watch. Um, I'm sorry I can't provide what it was called, but uh, it was, that was a really good watch. It was a really top tennis player, though. Dean, there was, oh, whoops. Oh, I was just gonna say, I don't know if you're seeing the comments in here, Dean, but there's a lot of great comments. 
Um, oh, I don't have any comments on it. I, I'm scared to touch anything, so I'll, I'll probably ruin it. <laughs> so we have, um, let me see. Let me scroll up a little bit. How to keep it fun. Here was, this is a question. How to keep it fun and how to avoid being too serious on race day. Race day is definitely a stressful day. So I know a lot of these younger right. writers could use some tips and advice on that. Well, it's kind of funny because I always got this, this stigma of not taking my racing seriously. But what they didn't realize was like, I work my ball off during the week in my training and my writing. And me being loose and relaxed on race day is what helps my head and helps my anxiety be clear. Like that's what, that's what helps me. Like that mentally, that's what helps me. And that I, I want to enjoy being at the races. So if I'm just having fun, having a laugh, you know, in a good mood, that's what will be my best performances and get me the best results. But people from the outside will see that and be like, oh, he's not taking it seriously. Like, and then the problem is, is there's just different personalities out there. You got a Ryan Dungey that's very serious. And, you know, he, he does his thing, but then there's like someone like me where I like to enjoy, try and enjoy the races. And just, that's what, if I'm trying to be dead serious, like I was in 2015 and 16, when I was on KTM, I was, I was trying to kind of be serious and on race day, I could say. And like, it just made me so tense and it up my anxiety even worse. So on race day, it's so important to have fun, enjoy it. Like, you know, it just, it's, you don't, it's not every day you get people to ride their dirt bike and go racing. And to put things in perspective, like, I'll do that a lot too. And like, you know, I get to go race my bike, make money doing it, travel the world. Like, that is a sick job. And I'm doing what I wanted to do as a kid and it became a reality. So just, you know, um, talking about and being grateful is, is uh, a big help and enjoying it. Thank you. That's great advice. And I think, you know, like you said, if you're not um, the type of person that's naturally very serious on race day, that's only going to make you more, you know, hyper aware of the, the fear and the un- unknown of what's going to happen that day. So really yeah. that's excellent advice to just kind of live in the moment Enjoy it as yeah. it comes. I love yeah, that. exactly. Like I, I, I try not to look too in the, I try not to look too in the depth in the things. Like, so I do my qualifier, and then after your qualifier, you have your heat race. I don't even bother looking who's in my heat race. But what does that matter, really? What does it matter if Pumac or, or Rock is in my heat? Like at the end of the day, what that does not matter. You just need need to focus on yourself and do the best that you can, can when the gate drops. You know, so I don't pay attention to any of that don't care who's on the track, who's behind me, you just got to focus on yourself. Dean, I have a question that one of the participants is someone I know and they texted me and they're wondering if you have any sort of, we talk about routines again, being regulating, any sort of uh-huh. routine, like do you put one boot on first and then the other, like do you have that routine, even with those little yeah. things that can set our brain into motion to, to settle down a little bit? Right, right. Um, honestly, not really. I throw my gear on um yeah go to start line um yeah when it comes to that stuff I don't really have anything too crazy I do have a routine though that like I don't like to just sit on the start line and just sit there when like for like 10 minutes because then my brain just starts thinking I'm thinking too much and it starts rambling and then I'm 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 thinking too many thoughts and thinking what if this what if that oh Cooper's beside me what if he out jumps me or I'm just I start thinking senseless thoughts and it just doesn't benefit me at all. So I like to get off my bike, go to the back um, of the start gate and just warm up, um, stretch, just keep occupied, like, you know, and then pretty much when they start, when we get to the start our bike, I hop on the bike and then I go. Um, I don't like to sit there because it gives me more time to think. And the more thinking, the less thinking, the better for me. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Yep. Jordan Jean just put a comment says to your point, the more you talk about it, the easier it becomes to manage. Do you ever feel that you are gaining or regaining your power back through the journey of your anxiety? Um, yeah, a little bit, a, a little bit. Um, I feel like, like I said, last year was really rough for me. 
um, dealing with it. And I've never dealt with it at that level. It was so extreme and scary and uh, it was crazy. And so it definitely made me do a lot more research and see other athletes that are dealing with it and how they dealt with it and what symptoms did they have. And um, so this year, um, I'll also add that last year, or the past couple of years, I've had Epstein-Barr virus, which is pretty much when you're just overtrained and your body is, your, your body's just at its lowest level and you're, you're, all your levels are just low. And I think that really didn't help my anxiety. I think that really made it easier to get anxiety and trigger it. And I, I think that's something that really, that, yeah, to make it work. So this year, I really like try to do all the proper things to heal my body and try to get my levels back up and get rid of my Epstein bar. And um, I've been so much better this year and I still get it. I definitely still get it. But there's times where I, I won't have any for like few, I won't have any for like three weeks at a time. And then I may get it a little bit and then, but I'm doing so much better this year for sure. So one thing that's interesting that you said that it helps, you know, talking about it. We had the same thing mentioned last month with Austin Forkner. He was our speaker and he, during our meeting, explained how this is actually really helping me right now, being able to talk about it. So I love hearing yeah. that, you know, that you guys are feeling a benefit from this as well as everybody else listening to you. So I hope that that's still the case for you right now, even though it is uncomfortable to discuss this you know, these topics, but yeah. I really enjoy hearing you and others spread awareness about it because really, I think education is the most important thing here because so many kids and even professional writers right now don't know what they're experiencing and they can't even classify it as anxiety because they're not aware of what anxiety is or depression. Yeah. So they might just be feeling like, I just feel really off or you know, maybe it's more, maybe it could be helped if they change their routine a little bit. So being yeah. able to talk about it is huge. And I'm really grateful that you're doing that today. Yep. No problem. Thank you. Also, we have a comment that says, oh, let me go back up. Thank you, Dean. Your story is very familiar to our family. It is important for our young kids to know that there is life outside of Moto. I believe that realization could take some of the pressure off. It is a hard thing to realize in the moment, but it is true. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, it's not everything, you know, I think um, probably what a lot of young kids struggle with is their parents are just so all in and just, you know, that this is it. And like, I was kind of like that in a way, like my, my parents were um, fully committed to me, but like at the end of the day, like if it didn't work out, I would be working construction or we're swinging a hammer with my dad or something like that right but like it, it's true like it's just not there's more life than more and it, it's you can just you can kill yourself internally over it so um just enjoy it and um do your best and at the end of the day that's all you can do thank you i do want to be respectful of your time so we have one hand up if that's okay what well, yeah no problem okay. william I just had a question. Um, do you have any advice? Like, cause I was at a race a few weeks ago and like I was doing really well. And then like I fell and I lost all my confidence. Like after the race, I was like mad that I didn't ride good. And I just wanted to quit riding and like was really upset about that. Do you have any advice to like help with that? Yeah, I do. And the first one is don't ever quit. That's trust me. I've wanted to quit so many times in my career i couldn't even tell you how many times i told myself i'm done but you can't you got to get up and keep charging and and just don't give up and just keep doing your best and you know keep plugging away that that's what's gotten me to where i'm at is i just never gave up i could have quit so many times in my career i got injured so much i got let go of a factory team twice and i had to claw my way back so the, the moral of the story is just don't give up and stay positive. Surround yourself with positive people. Don't, don't be with people that, you know, are going to be negative and 
tear you down. You want someone that's going to be positive and bring you back up. And my mom was always that person. My dad was always a little bit rough on me. He, he, he was a little bit negative, but my mom was always the one that pulled me back up and, and said, you know, you know, you can do it. And that was a big help to me. So, um, yeah, just don't quit and, and do your best. And that's all you can do. Thank you. You're welcome, buddy. Well, thank you so much, Dean. I really appreciate you opening up to us today about this topic. I think that you have made a huge impact on everybody here today and people that will come back and watch this recording later. So I appreciate yeah, uh, No problem. Thank you for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh,